Ceballos, I'm 36 years old, was born in 1982. And why do you hustle? I hustle because I have two daughters, man, and I want to leave them with generational wealth. And as long as I'm alive, as long as I got energy, I want to use all the hours that I can to spend time with them, but to also find a hustle that allows me to make money exponentially, not incrementally. So I was like tutoring uh, on the weekends privately for like anywhere between 60 to 150 an hour. Uh, working with prep schools but also on my own getting clients. But also uh, adjunct at Brooklyn College working as a, as a uh, critical thinking professor. And I also had a vintage shop called Vintage to the People. So I've always been hustling but prior to this I was primarily a teacher and educator. What made me quit my job? Well, I started to think uh, around the age of like 25, 26, I started to become disenchanted with academia, with academics. I felt like the 14 year old me wouldn't give a, a damn about what I was doing. It was almost as if I loved pasta and I ate it so much that one day I was like, yo, I'm done with pasta. I can't eat it anymore. So I, I, I I almost dropped out of high school, then I got really serious at 15. And then I just became this monk, man. Just stopped hanging out, just studied. I was all about like books, money, I got a job, and hanging out with girls. And I just got really disciplined. I ended up going to Princeton and Columbia, writing so much that I then wanted to just give back. It was almost like the information was just exploding, but I also wanted to get back to that side of me that was just playing in the streets, just inspiring people, doing amazing things. And so I felt like I've always loved art. And when I started painting, the feeling, the euphoria that I got from it, it was just like, oh man, I got this. Plus I got the knowledge, I could just paint anything. I literally feel invincible. Now, whoever wants to make this hustle their hustle, like Tupac says, study the game. So when I was a teacher coming home doing pieces, wondering could I make a living doing this, what I started to do was I started to uh, just look at the different genres of art. So I would YouTube University every evening just watching different just documentaries on like Van Gogh, Goya, paintings. I already knew some church, uh, some uh, art history from my studies. So, so it wasn't difficult to just research things. Then I would all, always sketch because I know that practice makes perfect. As a teacher, I tell students like just keep, keep writing, keep practicing those vocabularies. So I literally became the student. I taught myself. Uh, so teach yourself every single day. And just know that whatever you're trying to do, make sure that you perfect the business aspect of it. From the presentation, to the packaging, to how much you're spending, where you're getting your supplies from. It's like, I love drug dealers. You want art to be your hustle? Well, art is, you have a product. I don't gotta go to Colombia. I don't gotta go to Mexico. I just gotta go in here, B. I remember going into the 99 cent store, bro, and this is where I'll end. I'm buying a book for 199, a sketchbook, and some crayons, and some markers, and some color pencils, and I literally was, you can go to my Instagram post. People were like, yo, that shit is fire. I was making the same type of pieces. You know, I feel like, yo, you don't need anything. You just need your mind if you're an artist. And the hustle. Uh, my man Greg sent me this video where Tupac I, a, a rare like sort of speech or conversation where he's saying that he's bound to win because he respects the game, he respects the hustle, and he made himself a millionaire. Like he took the most demeaning jobs to get to where, and like people don't know, Tupac was a grinder. And so yeah, I'm out here. 
I'm out here with Beautiful Art, the very next day after a show, meeting dope people, selling. It's cash flow every day, it's better than no, no flow. And what's your name again? My name is Oriel Ceballos, from Panama, by way of Brooklyn, 36 years old, and I was born in 1982, and the reason that I keep emphasizing that, because it was a time where James Baldwin made me think about this, where if you were black or Latino, there was no birth certificate. So niggas were like 50, 60, not, if you ask them, what's your age? Right after slavery, people didn't know their age. You'd be a grown ass man, like, oh, well, I think I was born around like seven winters ago, you know, like 47 winters ago and shit. You know, so as a writer, if you're a black writer, one of the archetypes is to start with, I was born, if you're doing an autobiography. And I think that's a very powerful statement, I was, I am. In the beginning, there was darkness. So I'm an Oriel. So in case you want to know, like these over here are the $20 ones. Sure. These are 40 and then these are uh, 60 And you're more than welcome to negotiate. I'm in the street, so I know that <laughs> people are not planning to buy art. What you will see is, though, that people then appreciate that when you turn it over, they're all 140 Bring everything down in the, gallery, uh, in the streets just because I want to democratize art. My hustle is selling art, bro. Disseminating ideas on canvas, on paper, and then giving people inspiration. That's my hustle. Beautiful. <laughs> See, look, having that variation, man, that should work. Yo, and I'm all about learning, too, what works, what doesn't work. That's why I'm always changing my, my, um, my setup, because you can't get lazy. It's like science out here, bro. I guess because I study psychology, too, right? So you're always running experiments and seeing, like, what works and what, what gets the best results quicker. And sometimes less is more, or organization is key. And that's one thing that's vital. How you doing, my brother? Feel free to enjoy some art, man. Check me out on Instagram, read about me. Go pick or go home, that's what I tell people. And you gotta believe in yourself. Yeah, yeah, well, I give my daughters the best of the day. Uh, I used to be a professor. I became a young professor at 25 from Panama, grew up in Brooklyn. Then I just decided, like J. Cole, he gave his 4.0, uh, degree to his mom and said I'm gonna be a rapper. So at the age of 30, I said, since I'm gonna be a father, I'm gonna find a way to like provide for my kids just on my own. And I've been doing it now for five years, giving them the best experience traveling. Yo, on October 6th, on a regular day, like a regular day, I was, uh, it was a Sunday too, man. I'm set up, sunny day, uh, prepped to sell art. So I wasn't set up maybe 15, 20 minutes when I was approached by Sergeant Joseph and two other officers, uh, like as if I was a criminal, man, just disturbing my vibe and just a happy scene. Now you got kids and family members just approaching the scene and just really aggressive, asking me to take down my art from a fence or to pick some off the ground, uh, which I agreed to, but at the moment I had clients. So I said after the clients, but this sergeant has been on me, so she was like, do it now, and I chose not to. I said, either give me the ticket or give me the 30 minutes that I'm owed, which is actually on the NYU uh, Parks uh, policy online. And this was selective enforcement. I was then tackled, grabbed from behind, and I just wasn't going down like that. Uh, you can't tackle a citizen and demand that citizen to be arrested without any provocation.
I got arrested, pepper spray, tackled, all that stuff. Um, a few weeks later, I connected with Swiss Beats, uh, who found me because the love that I show in the streets, man, some people, like, he got an incredible amount of uh, emails and just DMs from people who just said, hey, man, you gotta step in. So I guess they saw my story and decided to step in, like he said, to change the trajectory, change the image. Uh, they appreciated my hustle in the streets and what they see is that I'm one foot in the gallery, one foot in the streets, bro. And what you have here is the beginning of this show is me in the streets because it was the summertime. And what I believe is an artist has to survive all year round, but you got to be creative. I'm an artist. I don't just make images. I live creatively. So I'm going to creatively sell. When the uh, months are cold, I throw this. I bring it here. And all those people that I've met this summer, or now here, along with old ones. And like, I don't want you to settle for prints because you feel like you can't afford this. I'm real about mine. It's fifth. You can make an offer up to fifty percent off this Black Friday weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I sell online, I sell everywhere, but I, I work out of galleries, so I curate like three, four shows during the uh, fall and winter. I curate more shows, in the summer I like to be outside. Just simple as that, yeah. just making art, talking to people. And then you sort of build. I sold 7,000, bro. This is my third summer doing this shit. Traveled more than like people in their 50s. One daughter is five and she's been on the plane 19 times. I'm gonna tell you this, yo, my family thought I was crazy when I decided to like, I went to Princeton in Columbia. I'm the oldest of five, so my family was like, what are you doing? You're fucking up the dream, trying to be this artist. Everyone wants to be an artist now. You're Every with it? Like, am I? I'm making more money, like I can't complain. I'm going to be a millionaire. Enough, not enough people talk about the losses, they focus on the wins. I wanna talk about the losses that comes with the hu uh, hustle. There are slow moments in the hustle, but what I've done recently is just grind so hard that I'm able to survive the winters now just on the commissions and shit. So you gotta diversify the hustle. And think of the hustle quarterly, the way a business thinks. Like every business knows they divide the year into quarters, right? So you know that the first quarter is gonna be the slowest quarter because Christmas ended, so now January, like those first three months, people are building again. So that's, most businesses, that's it. Now, even in the billions, like, like let's say you make a billion, now you're making like 500 million in those first three quarters, you feel me? Then it picks up, now you got like six, eight, and then around Christmas time, like the end of the quarter, you know? Uh, so just divide the months, you know? Every four months, you know, just see it that way and just prepare for the for the slow months. Cause you don't want to keep losing. It's okay to lose, but you gotta learn when you lose. <laughs> <laughs>